video is a continuation of our marginal cost of capital example. In the last video, we went through the example itself and solved step one, the market value weights, and step two, the after-tax cost of debt. What I want to do in this stage is continue on with step three, the cost of preferred stock. Now when we start the preferred stock model, we're starting with our stock valuation chapter where we said the price of preferred stock is just equal to the dividend divided by the required return, the no growth model. Now the cost of preferred stock is going to be that required return that we used in the valuation model because the return to investors is the cost to the firm. So we just want to solve for that required return. And when we do that, we're going to end up with the following formula. The cost of preferred stock financing, we just put a little subscript P there to identify it as preferred stock, is equal to the dividend divided by the price. So now, just want to work through that. We want the dividend on the preferred stock. We have a dividend rate of 6% and a $100 par value. So our dividend is going to be $6. Just 6% of 100. And the current price of the preferred stock is $68. So we just take the 6 divided by 68, and get 0 .0882. Now we want to be careful here in that when we solve for the cost of debt, the after-tax cost of debt, our answer was in percentage value. Remember we had 5.15%. Here, this 0 .0882 is in decimal, so we need to convert it to percent. 8.82 percent is the cost of preferred stock financing. We've got to be consistent with that. Common mistake I see people make is leave their answer here for preferred stock in decimal, and that greatly understates the cost of preferred stock financing. Next we can go to solving for the cost of common. Now with cost of common there's several different approaches we take to this because each one has some flaws. The first approach is very similar to what we did up here. We're starting with the pricing model, the dividend pricing model. That's why we call it the dividend valuation approach. But now since we're dealing with common stock, we're starting with the constant growth model instead of the no growth model because common stock typically allows dividends to grow over time. Again, this required return is what we're solving for. So we want to solve for that required return and when we do that, we're going to get the following formula. We just put in a little subscript S to identify its common stock. So our formula for the cost of common stock financing is just D1 divided by P0 plus the growth rate. D1, if we look at our example, we're given D0, not D1. So we're going to have to forecast that. So D1 is going to be $2.64 times 1 plus the growth rate, and our growth rate is 4%. The price common stock, $30.45. Be careful that you get the price of common stock and not the price of preferred there. And then we want to add in the growth rate. The growth rate we said was 4%. Be careful here. We want to add that in as a decimal, not a percentage. So 4% is 0 .04. Now we can go through and solve for this. 
two dollars and sixty four cents times one point oh four gives us a dividend of approximately two dollars and seventy five cents I'm just gonna round that off and make it two dollars seventy five cents for our D1 then divide by thirty point four five which is our price Add in the point zero four and get point one three zero three. Now remember this is in decimal, we need to convert it to percentage, so it should be thirteen point zero three percent for our cost of common stock financing. Problem is this is based on the constant growth model. The constant growth model assumes dividends are going to grow at the same percentage rate every year forever. For most companies, that's not a realistic assumption. That's going to introduce some error. So this is an approximation. The approximation is better for companies with stable growth rates. It's worse for companies with volatile growth rates. It also has a major flaw in that it's based on dividends. So companies that don't pay dividends, it's going to end up giving us an incorrect value. We can't use this reliably for companies that don't pay dividends because this whole first part is going to become zero and the growth rate in dividends if you're starting from zero is undefined so it's not going to give us an answer that we can work with. So the dividend valuation model is an approximation approximation that works well for companies with stable growth rates and works poorly for companies with unstable growth rates does not work at all for companies that do not pay dividends. So we need a backup model and that's where we're going to be going to our next video is our backup models. There's actually two of them that we're going to introduce.